Oh God. Okay. So he's over there whining and stuff. I totally. heard him over there. Did you really? <laughs> uh, yeah, I heard him a little bit. So in the I opened his cage he and then he's just staring at me. Now he's going to get in trouble. Chew on the couch or something. Be a good boy, but he actually has gotten really good this week. Look he's how big really, he's getting. He, yeah, wow. I'm trying to get out of the way. Yeah, he's gotten really big. I wish he had stopped that. I was saying to Lisa, I'm going to start giving him beer and tobacco. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Smoke this <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> Throw him this, into yeah. a bucket of cold water. <laughs> <laughs> but he's uh, gotten really good. He's understanding. He certainly understands what no is, and he wants to please. You know, yeah. he's a one of those real domesticated type of dogs. I say That's that awesome. because you remember Bowser. Bowser was a very much a wild dog. Uh, he, he was, was. found. His litter was, was found in an abandoned building. I mean, he came from wild dogs and wow. uh, and he had that, those kind of instincts. He's definitely from domesticated breeds. He just wants mm. to please. He's going to be a really good. Yeah, he's laying right behind me now. He's nah, like, that's oh, cool. what happened to my camera? Don't you hate when that happens? Yeah, uh, I do. We're underwater now all of a sudden. Yeah. Okay. T- turn it off and turn it on. Yeah. And down it, down oh, below. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, there. You're in. Uh, <laughs> just when it was working. Oh, did it come back? <laughs> oh, yeah, there you're we good. Are. You're good. Cool. Hey, hey I, was, so- I wanted to talk about that. Let's go, Brandon. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. I don't know if you've been watching this or not, but... Uh, this uh, thing has been taking off where huge crowds of sporting events, mostly. Mm -hmm. And this is now happening around the world where this chant is going out and it's, it's F Joe Biden. actually. Yeah, I've seen it. And um, I, and, and so, but that's turned into let's go Brandon because. Oh, that one clip you (laughs) sent that to me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and so people are saying that all over the place now, and it's just kind of funny to me. Uh, it's the code it, it's the yeah, code it is yeah. and it's kind of um i i, I kind of think it's a neat thing because people are i mean these are large groups it's not just people on the right or anything like that it's people are getting fed up mm-hmm. uh, with the fact that there is an oppressive government that is not actually serving the needs or the rights of the people out there not and i'm not all. talking about of uh, the Democrat Party or Joe Biden. I'm talking about our government. Our on government's both sides a mess. Of the aisle. It is sick what's happening. And, you know, as we talked about this, um, this, this whole thing with that's happening in the NFL, it's symptomatic of the bigger problem that's happening right now, which is that the people have been marginalized. Mm-hmm. The, our needs, our wants, our cares, our families, our investments, our, our livelihood, our we're lives, nothing but tax general, producers. Our, we're chattel at this point. And mm-hmm. what's happened is is that people are starting to realize that hey, this is tyranny that's happening right now. And they're as you said, they're giving the double bird on this, and they're saying mm-hmm. we're not going to take it anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I'm I'm actually pretty encouraged. I mean, it's sort of the don't tread on me of the 1700s. Mm-hmm. Oh, I th- thank you for saying that. That that's the first thing that we've said in the last hour and a half that made me feel hopeful. Well, you talked about it earlier in the show, is that um this is we have to take the bull by the horns on this and and make something happen because if it keeps going down this 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 hole it's this too giant late. pit uh we're done well mm. the, it, we we talked a lot at the beginning of the year about the declaration of independence and the constitution and it's very interesting when we take a look at that again and say hey this is um this is what the the document actually is saying in the declaration is that all men are created equal, that we're created in the image of our, our maker, that um, it, the gov- our government is, is in place to simply secure the liberties that have been bestowed by God on us. And that um, that's why it's 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 by the consent of the governed, because who can govern God except for by consent. And then it goes on to say a, a couple of, of paragraphs later that when governments cease to protect the liberties that are bestowed by God, and not just a little couple simple things, but when this becomes the habit, that it's up to the people to destroy that government and rebuild a new government in the image of the former. I think Uh, about that a lot. 
And so this is what the our founding fathers put down and as they were commencing a revolutionary war against the greatest power known to man, which was the which was the British Empire. Mm -hmm. And so they stood up to that. And at the end of the document, they pledged their lives, their lip, their their fortune and their uh, sacred honor to one another. Uh, they really had to go through hardships in order to make this nation come about. But I hear the echo of their voice today. And what 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 is our responsibility in this era where we have we have, for instance, um, these mandates that are coming out of the White House right now from the president? And the big deal in the Declaration of Independence is separation of powers into the executive, legislative, and judicial branch. It is saying in that declaration that only God can take on the, all three of those responsibilities or any two of those responsibilities because only God is just. Man, when, um, when given absolute power, is corrupted absolutely. And then they go into a litany of how King George had combined those those uh those entities to create tyranny and what we see is these mandates happening from a president who is not a legislator so they're not called laws they're called mandates it's a little uh, word right. play right there sure. to get around it but presidents don't have the power to legislate the people have the power to legislate through the legislative branch. That's why we elect all of those people in Congress. And so what we see is a combination of, of, of branches under one person, it always equals tyranny. Now we're seeing these things happening with our workforce where you can't even go to a restaurant because they don't have enough labor anymore. You can't get stuff off the shelf and afford it anymore. Your, your savings plans, your 401ks are diminishing because the dollar is weakening because they keep printing more dollars, which is how that happens. Mm -hmm. th th this is tantamount to theft. Yeah, it is. You know, I've been thinking a lot about this and uh, where we're at and how we can rectify things. And, you know, it's always it always comes back to education. Now, what do we mean by education? We're talking about our school system. Well, that's a whole nother issue that it definitely needs rectified. But what I mean is mainstream media, where people are getting their education and ver mainstream media versus these independent podcasts is really what I'm talking about. So independent podcasts have been educating some of us, millions of us actually, at an exponential rate, far beyond what we could ever glean from mainstream media over the past 10, 20 years. You know what I mean? Yes. And so what I was thinking is that if we can find a way to unite and actually makes, uh, take what we're doing now and make it way more legitimate and completely overthrow mainstream media uh, and bring it back to where it used to be even better than what it used to be traditionally, because there's so much more available to us through more numbers and better technology. So we can educate people a thousand times more than we could have when we had channels three, five, and eight or whatever in the, in the news 40 years ago. True. So what if we independent people, uh, these uh, like us, like, uh, breaking points with crystal and Sagar, like uh a lot of other people and by the way for the last couple of weeks i've been going and doing searches in podcasts and putting in independent news and trying to find new ones and uh Good. add to my repertoire <clears throat> i like that which is yeah it was very interesting a lot of crap out there but i'll find a gem like like crystal and Sagar's, i'm sure but anyways so if we could uh unite and rate each other so to speak, this is really loose thinking me riding my bike around thinking about it, right? So we get five, a, rate, a five star rating. Okay, so like Crystal and Sagar, they were at the hill, they made their break from Fox and MSNBC came together and did a show at the at the hill. And right. uh, <laughs> I would say that they would get a three star rating, because what at that point, because the quality of their material was astronomical. However, they were still owned by the Hill. Right. So it's just why they left them and went independent. Now their show is called Breaking Points and they're 100% independent. They would get a five-star rating all day long. Uh, kind of my point. 
And then the other thing, we rate each other. That's where the rating comes from. I like your ideas here. So like, you know, uh, the other, and there would be a criteria. Another criteria is, do they state their sources and how credible are their sources? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so you could climb up that ladder. I think uh, you and I have done a much better job of stating our sources, giving that information and putting it in a digestible manner, you know, giving that we don't have a budget to work with. Um, <laughs> but my point is, is that we rate each other and form this kind of coalition. And at the same time, it gives credibility and organization, all of us. There's a form of power there too. So now we start doing the real interviews with the presidential candidates, real interviews with politicians. People want to hear this stuff. I would love to hear, I'm going to leave the adjectives out, AOC on a long form podcast. She won't do it. Yeah, no. She won't, it she's is, always it's... being that. She won't do it. She won't debate anymore. Because right. there's no substance behind what she says. No, Did no. She can't defend that? what she says. Absolutely not. Did you hear about that uh, a couple of weeks ago when, <laughs> off the cuff and changing directions, but I have to say it. A couple of weeks ago when the, there was a vote on the table, part of the bill was uh, the Iron Dome thing for Israel. Yeah. The yes. missile, billion dollar. Uh, yeah. We're supposed to, for some reason, give Israel a billion dollars towards a missile plan. I say for some reason, hey, all about Israel, but they're a very rich nation. They don't need a right. billion dollars from us. Why are we anyways, doing that? Right. Right. So she's a known anti-Semite. She comes out and says right. it. And of course, so you would expect her to vote against it, right? Well, she did. She voted for it. And she changed it at the last minute. And she, she did. She did. And then she made this big scene about crying. Uh, right there. In I Congress. remember that. Yes. And then what wrote the heck? a four page apology letter that was just a bunch of word salad that made no sense, which is typical what the postmodernists do. That's they're always they do that. They just word go salad. on it. I like that. Term on and on and on. Nothing made yeah. any sense whatsoever. But she thinks that she, you know, went on an apology tour. I guess the, the real thing is she was playing politics that she's worried that, uh, Jewish people are moving into her district or, and, or that she's going, the jurist, the jurisdiction is going to get realigned. Yeah. And she's going to get ousted as a result. So well, yeah, I mean, she's long beach. She's right? learning I mean, how to play politics and yet she sucks at it crying and then writing this word salad of an apology letter that made no sense. She's yeah. Stupid. Yeah. That, I would but, love to see her on a three, three hour podcast, dude. Right, right. I think you're making a great point here about uh, the 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 evolution of of where we get our information yeah. from and how these podcasts have really been able to bring the real news and and uh, it, and and really on that line, you talk about uh, podcasts. Joe Rogan has really been on fire over yeah. the last. I mean, for he's really quite a guy. I got to say, I. He's you actually introduced him to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about him until I heard you speaking about him. And I mean, we've seen some of the most amazing things, but this past one with uh, Dr. Gupta from CNN, did you watch that? Or only saw the highlights that? of that yesterday, just only, a, about 10 minute highlight of it. And I was like, wow, man. I mean, you know, some we have interviewing savvy going on there. Okay. So this guy is the, one of the best interviewers I've ever seen. Ever. And, and, and here's a couple of the things that I really like about him is one is that his calm demeanor that he has uh, when he's, he's not talking offensive. about things. Yeah. He's, he's, he seems to, he, he doesn't take anything he, personal. He's able to have these very logical conversations because he keeps his, he keeps himself in a place yeah. where emotion doesn't actually cloud thinking. And he's right. able to have conversations with people that have different opinions. And, and so he had Dr. Goop to come in who, I already Explain know who, who he is. Dr. Gupta is the, the medical expert from CNN. And he's go. also the guy that has been really uh, promoting this, the, 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 the everything CNN promotes uh, around COVID-19 about what you say. I am going to be very careful. And, and so he's, he's their guy when they, when they want a medical opinion, they bring him in, but he's also a party line guy who's, he was never going to go against what CNN has to say, or 
really what the that's where he got in trouble pieces and and that's exactly right because yeah. i really because love- i want to say briefly to continue setting that stage because cnn went on this big parade of uh saying that joe rogan was taking i'm going to be careful taking a medication used in animals and, yes, that's uh, exactly right. It was very, very wrong. It was very fake news. The, the, the fact is they're treading the line here because the fact is, is that this medication is and has been used for uh, for animals. Dozens I mean, of, oh, and uh, in humans for dozens of years, the, the inventor of this got the Nobel Peace Prize. That's exactly right. It was discovered and used first on on animals, but then it was also found to be able to help uh, with Parasitics. another parasitic that yeah. uh, people, it was a river uh, disease or something like that, something like that. Uh, that uh, in 1985, it was approved for human beings. And uh, in 2015, it won the Nobel Prize for its efficacy and safety. And, but it was being labeled a an animal drug when Joe <laughs> Rogan took it to really discredit yeah. the drug and discredit so Joe Rogan as well. Yeah. So, so in this podcast, uh, of course, uh, Joe Rogan so professionally uh, backed him uh, into a corner and pummeled him. <laughs> and and made him admit, made Dr. Gupta admit that it was wrong for CNN to do oh, yeah. what they did, yeah. which I thought was outstanding the he way did that it he professionally did it. and he Very didn't do it to he didn't do it where he was impugning dr gupta for being a bad guy or anything right. like that he just right. he it was just a matter of fact that he put that he put the facts out there and said do you agree with this or disagree and, and dr gupta had to tell the truth now i couldn't I have scripted was, that any better he, it, was, it was wonderful and it was it had a lot to do with his demeanor and the way that he brought it out there and he was just charging ahead with truth but and that guy finding. tried backing out of that conversation and doing a, an end around so bad and rogan just kept putting him right back in the pocket well this is why the three-hour podcast deal that you're yes. saying is the important thing because in that time period people can't you wiggle can't out of these things with platitudes hide. now here's what's interesting is that um I saw Gupta on CNN with uh, with Don Lemon uh, after that was over, and Don Lemon is I oh mean, god, that guy gets it. He's he's a propaganda guy, uh, absolutely company man all the way. He's he's, he's a propaganda a arm ago. for the the leftist yes, movement, yes, and yes. and I saw him say, "Wait a second, I just want to bring something up here." is that it was not a lie for CNN to say that this was a drug that was made for animals. And um, and then Gupta was like, well, yeah, you're right. You know, you, oh, it, good it was Lord. made. And, and so they went back to they went CN- CNN down. was right. Oh, God. <laughs> but oh. the fact of the matter is, is Lemon that makes an ass out of himself they, he, every Lemon day. knew that what they were doing was trying to discredit a person who was actually thinking for themselves that has 20 million viewers to his pot, viewers, listeners to his podcast. And he, they had to untarnished the CNN name yeah. by saying that they were right. Well, of course they, they were right by right saying that, yeah. but what they were doing was trying, and it was Joe Rogan said, hey, I've got enough money to buy people medicine. <laughs> 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 that but was they, can, they cannot admit that. I'd love to see Don Lemon in that three hour podcast oh my, you'll and having to deal that. with a very civilized person that has a difference of opinion and let's reason together. That's the problem. They d- can't reason when it's illogical, a uh, illogical All premise right. that they know is a lie to begin with. And the really funny thing is, is almost every checkbox for Rogan goes left. Uh, I know, you know, okay. he's a liberal all the way, but he's a gun enthusiast. He goes, he's a hunter. So, uh, so, so here's that I saw. Okay. So I saw the view, their take on that whole thing. Oh my it's, God. It's funny that's gotta that, be mind blowing. Uh, I could only watch the clips on it, <laughs> but I thought it was very interesting because of course, joy, whatever her name is, yeah, was, very, Oh, very... he's got, he's got 20 million viewers. It's like, that's crazy. That, that guy's a crackpot. If, like, she and, never, and he's, she doesn't know anything about him. And she thinks he's like a, a conservative. Right. And yep. Yeah. And he's a, he's a far right crackpot. And then, so you've got these, 
You've got these women that are on the show. Yeah, he's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you got these women that are on the show. Uh, two of them are black, and and one of them was saying, um, pretty much what we're seeing is that wait a second. I think it's she's this is what she said. I think it's important whether you agree with Joe Rogan or not to hear his point of view, at least a know what, point of what view, he's talking about, who he is, so that we can kind of have a discussion. And 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 we're never going to influence people if we don't actually take into consideration what their other side is. You, you might not be able to convince Joe Rogan, but other people are listening to this. And if you could have a fair debate about this, maybe somebody's going to be influenced it's by that. the other woman who is black on the show um used to work for cnn and she says listen i don't care to listen to uh the trump mind there you go i don't care disregard to, to uh this uh anti-vaxxer mind because i don't care to to entertain crazy mm -hmm. and i thought that's very interesting that she, first of all, related uh, not taking the, the, the or having a problem with the vaccination to, um, uh, to, to Trump, because Trump's the one that came That's up with warp speed. That's all you got to say, speed. now you can disregard it. Yeah, yeah, Trump developed warp speed, okay? He took the vaccine. He was one of the first guys to take the vaccination. And secondly, you got to look at, anti-vaxxer i told you last week that the webster's changed the definition of anti-vaxxer yeah. which yeah. is really crazy i i'm not anti-vaxxer i've got i've had a ton of them okay right. um but but here's the thing is that if you take a look at the black population here in america they have the lowest instances of being vaccinated in the united states so here's a black woman who seems to be saying that all the black people that haven't taken the vaccination are automatically Trump supporting uh, anti-vaxxers, which you're giving her too true. much airtime. It that, that can't be true. Like yeah. this, is, this is the thing I'm saying is it's just like Don Lemon was doing. It's just like she's doing. It's just like the Joy Bear was doing or Bayhard or whatever her name is. <laughs> These people are just lying all they just, do just I get lying. It. it's like i said i get it on quora all the time i just i just responded to somebody a few days ago that was saying something about rogan uh totally he answered a question you're supposed to give some factual basis in source material and have a halfway intelligent answer when you're answering a question he doesn't know who the hell rogan is he so he mentioned that he's a right wing somebody or another and i just put in the car in the comments you obviously have no idea who joe rogan is right but i just got like 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 on, on that you know it's don't don't do because when you do that oh we can disregard him because he's far right uh what's his name uh talks 100 million miles an hour young guy um i uh geez daily wire oh uh ben shapiro yes yes same. They always do that with him. Oh my God. Nobody could debate Ben Shapiro. You know what I mean? He's, I don't agree with everything he says, but boy, is he smart. <laughs> Guys, wait, and look at the, the walking encyclopedia. Yeah, don't yeah. try to argue. So they just disregard guy. him as far right. And right. Uh, he's pretty far right. But I mean, to say that about Rogan, who's a liberal and, and uh, Jordan Peterson, who's a classical liberal and they do that to him all the time because wow you can see him destroying these progressive leftists on youtube all day long you know what's interesting barry is this whole thing i i was i was look, talking look to Anne Marie about this <laughs> <laughs> i was talking to Anne Marie about this and um you know dan bongino um he loves to talk about oh the liberal liberals they're doing this and the liberals mm -hmm. it's almost like liberal is a swear word sure uh i i like dan bongino but i think he, he's very excitable and I, sometimes it's hard to listen to <laughs> he goes he right just there? goes too too deep in the paint i think dan well, John, he, bongino is really freaking smart he I says think he a is lot too. of smart stuff let me just make a point though, just to like his demeanor i think that liberals and leftists i've made this point before are, are different the, the, you're different. a liberal yeah. uh but you don't agree with marxism or which is less leftism right um 
and, and it seems like the Democrat Party now, has, it doesn't seem like it. They've been hijacked by the left, by oh, yeah. Marxists, okay? And so this is what's Biden so important surveys. about looking at what the independents are doing. <laughs> we look at what the independents are doing. And that's what I think is so important about this thing is that, you know, the 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 independents really are representing more what the liberal view has traditionally been all along. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's wrong for Dan Bongino to be saying that, oh, look at the liberals, because I don't think the liberals agree with most of the stuff that's happening right now with no. our government. No, I totally agree with you. <laughs> now he's at the other window. No, we made that point early on in our podcast. By the way, next week is our last uh, last show of season four. Oh, my gosh. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. that is so I know. Crazy. But we made that <laughs> point early on in the podcast. Dude, I used to say liberal all the time, too. man. I was really meaning leftist. Yeah, and yeah. Clearly, I'm a liberal. I, I, I don't want to bunch you into that. No, group, I don't either. And uh, I'm a proud liberal, to be honest with you. Well, I think that's great because here's the thing is talking to a liberal, a real classical liberal mm -hmm. is somebody that is going to listen to different points of view. Damn straight. And, yeah. and, and analyze it with critical thinking. Um, that's called reasoning. Mm -hmm. That used to be something that we valued here. We this valued, country. we all did. We valued that in this country. Yeah. And, but not anymore with this cancel culture. No. We can't, uh, we can't stand uh, when somebody cancel challenges culture. us and because we have no, we don't know how to, it, we don't know how to communicate anymore. And I think no, this whole, we, we lost the art of parenting. That's why we, we lost the fine art of parenting and, and we gave out the participation trophies and we, I said it in the last show, we just continue down that road with these, the same, the same generation that are now adults and that are teaching our kids. Hey, I, I know it's changing gears, but I did want to get this out here it kind of fits more of the original show more, but did you hear about the U S government commissioning Merck to produce a new uh, vid medication? Yeah, yeah, I've I'm, been, I've been I'm, I'm hesitant that. to say the full name. It's hard to say, no, but it, it seems is. I'm going to just call it uh, Molnu. OK, uh, OK, that's pretty close. <laughs> so yeah. that you'll know what I'm talking. About. I don't want to get yeah. flagged again. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this would probably be controversial. OK, th so they were commissioned the U.S. government. That means taxpayer dollars, our dollars, mine and yours uh, and our listeners. Uh, so now Mark wants to turn around and charge the government taxpayer dollars. 40 times the cost of production. So it costs $17.74 to produce one dose of this. And Merck wants to charge taxpayers $712 for that dose. That is sick. That's, we already paid is... them to develop it. All right, this man, I'm going to kill that dog. Um, now, so the government, there is a, okay, and this is, uh, this is from the Harvard School of Public Health and King's College Hospital of London. Shut up. All right. So now I got my abuse on tape there. Um, government. OK, <laughs> there is this caveat. The government doesn't have to accept this since the government funded it. It's a candidate for using the the by the by by dole act, the by dole act or patent and trademark trademark law amendment act is United States legis is is United States legislation dealing with inventions arising from federal federal government funded research it may review the pricing if it's deemed excessively priced this clearly is sponsored by two senators birch by of indiana and bob dole of Can kansas the act was adopted in 1980 is codified at 94 stat whatever that means so there's hope for that but I, how despicable is that on merck's part but that's part of capitalism again they're legally allowed to give it a shot, you know, uh, uh, trying to, uh, trying to, uh, what's the word, uh, but uh, fleece us, fleece us for 40 times the cost of production. Well, we already paid them to produce it. You, you know, it's really funny to me. I, it's, this isn't funny, but mm. I mean, funny, like I'm going to barf over this. Yeah. It's sad. Okay, they're going to try to milk us for billions and billions of dollars the way that they already do. But that same drug that we were talking about with um, <clears throat> Joe Rogan yeah, right. is made by Merck. Ivy. Oh, really? I just call it Ivy. 
You know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, Merck makes okay, so Merck came out. I didn't know that was Merck as well. Because it's yeah. a generic, it's a generic now. They probably uh, originally but they were the it. they were the inventor okay. of it. Okay. And uh they they put that out there and they they've been the one that's one of the companies that's come against uh the eye product. And here because they, they no longer have a patent on it. So now they're developing so they come this out one, with this same crap. But and they, they have a bet on it. Billions and billions of dollars this off of it. This is so crazy. Crooked. I mean, this is like, you, look, look, this is, if we were in a court of law, it'd be, this would be part of the evidence. Slam like, you know dunk. what I'm saying? Like, be like come yeah, on, you guys. We're going to just hang you right now. Right, okay? right, yeah. right. Uh, no. Yeah, we, the, the cards are stacked. But it's isn't this an amazing thing that we found out Disgusting. that all the new billionaires that have become billionaires over the last year, uh, or so have all been from pharma. Oh, they've yeah. all come out of pharma. So oh, yeah. come on, this is what's happening. It, for, the old adage of follow the money, mm -hmm. so just follow the money. We can see you know what's what? going on. Here. I think it, today we've come a long ways in um, shedding some light on uh, some avenues where we can start to write the ship a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think so. We've got to keep this up. Keep yeah, talking about I, this. I, I see it as well. So um, did you, of course, you must have seen the whole thing that was happening with Southwest Airlines. Um, uh, what? Okay, so Southwest Airlines over the weekend. I've heard weekend, them in the news, but like, yeah, what they now? canceled yeah. like 2,500 flights in the last mm. week here, leaving people stranded all over the place. And, and today, when you leave people stranded, they can't just get a rental car because there aren't any or right. they're going to be uh quadruple or yeah. even more the price of what they used to be right. and um and so they were blaming it on the weather in fact the ceo has blamed it on the weather uh several times but the interesting thing is none of the other airlines were really affected in anywhere near that mm. way uh so it has to be something else i have a friend that okay. works for southwest airlines and um she is uh, the, so Southwest just came out with a pretty severe uh, vaccination mandate and uh, that just happened. So she called us before the weekend started and uh, she's going to lose her job. She's been working there for something like 30 years mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's going to happen uh, beginning of December. And so this happened right before the weekend and then Southwest immediately started having all of these problems uh, with uh, the flights. And what the speculation is, is that A, this doesn't have anything to do with the weather and B, this looks like some sort of a walkout that's happened oh. uh, at the, to affect all of these flights. The CEO's doubled down. Uh, he's talking about the mandate himself saying that uh, he doesn't, he never agreed with any of these mandates, but they're a government contractor. And therefore, because Joe Biden made that mandate, he's going to follow it. Uh, but nobody's going to get fired, he said, out of his mouth this week, which is weird because that's exactly what he said to all of his employees. We're going to see what happens, but these mandates that are happening from the from Joe Biden, he came out this week and said that it's the the uh, they are going to be coming out. The Labor uh, Commission is going to come out with these mandates uh, for 100 employees and up across the nation. And we've got about uh, 80 million residents in this country that have not been vaccinated yet. Um, I think it's going to be as we take a look at the supply chain issues, as we take a look at the labor shortage, <laughs> this is going to be a disaster. Um, I also think it's interesting that Joe Biden has um, been touting and bragging about the fact that his mandates are working and look, people are getting vaccinated. Well, it's because you're scaring the Jesus out of them by threatening their employment that we've never seen anything like this before I mean these aren't legislative laws these are mandates which again goes back to that constitutional thing I know yeah. we're seeing um, compound issues that are happening as an issue on top of issue on top of issue I don't know how we dig ourselves out of this whole thing but we've created Not a sure. mega nightmare not sure either. I was listening to a podcast this morning, Jordan Peterson. He was talking about this, the mandates, and, and he was talking about the U.S. Of course, he's Canadian, but he's like, right. 
uh, they take a big, strong look at the, what the U.S. is doing. And, and the issue of mandating uh, the vaccines, which is a tough, tough issue to even talk about and where to go with it. And he just said, he said, but at the end of the day, you go mo much more authoritarian when you mandate this stuff. And he goes in the U.S. because it's different. Canada's different. They like to be told what to do. They do. And he said, he goes, but in the U.S., he goes, I just don't see this ending well. And, you know, either. I but there's no answer. He's given he supplied no answer uh, because he certainly talked about the other side of it, of hospitals getting overloaded and, and things like that. But I'm hoping, thinking that we're at a stage right now. It seems like we got on the other side, even of the other side of Delta. But God only knows as the weather gets a little colder and stuff if something happens but maybe maybe the the right way to steer the course of things is to st start talking about the wins about a billion plus people across the world vaccinated and how we've gotten on the other side of things things are looking good and uh progress people are getting back to work and you can spend some of that and try to make things hopeful and try to use hope rather than fear to get on the other side of this, but I don't think they want to get on the other side of this. I think they no. want to keep using that fear is man. They want that, but they want to remain in power. And I'm seeing the left, boy, they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff to just hey, stay in power, no matter what it takes. That's pretty much the mantra. It does seem to be, uh, I agree with it. I mean, it's hard not to see this and I see this. I mean, just this past week, Jen Psaki came out and said that um, really this is Joe Biden's opportunity to change the economy of the United States. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do it now that we're coming out of COVID, then we'll never be able to do this. And right. well, the whole never be able to do this, I think has to do with the midterm elections mm -hmm. and the fact that mm -hmm. these Democrats are going to lose their seats, yeah. but it's a, a bold admission that I've never heard before, which is saying, look, we're using this to, to to control the economy fundamentally and, change the government and, and also and, and also to create a way for us to permanently have control yeah. over over uh, this government and, and an authoritarian control over the government yeah. Yeah. and and so you know we've we've been the country seems to have been beaten into submission as to uh, to to really turn it more into a canadian type of a populist where mm -hmm. we just accept this type of authoritarian mm -hmm. rule which mm -hmm. is that's a scary proposition because when you take a look at things that are, take a look at Australia right now and oh, yeah. some of the videos that are coming out of there are horrifying. It's unbelievable. Dude, I think they've had a, a grand total of 812 deaths due to COVID. I total. think you're right. Yes. And so when you take a look at and, and when you listen to this prime minister over there talking about freedom and rights, it's all a bunch of BS, man. He's, oh. He doesn't believe in any of that. And when you look at the way these that they're treating the citizenry of of Australia. The the thing that you said this is supposed to be a democratic country, and the, the, what I see is this is a prelude to what's about to happen here. We're on the cusp of this here. We're we're just about there. Actually, mm -hmm. we're not far behind this. No. Um, and if that's what we want in this country, then our country's lost. We don't have a country like it's not America anymore. No, I agree. Merle, I hate to say it. I got to go. I got to kill this dog and bury him in the backyard. before. How did sit. we get through all of that time so quickly? I came to this show thinking well, I don't really have a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot though. I had a lot and I was really excited to get started. I know today. this has been a great one, Barry. I think so too. And yeah. uh, so we're going to wind up season, uh, season he, four. Next well, week. he's just saying goodbye. Yeah. Oh God. Bye Charlie. God, I love him, but <laughs> my God. Uh, he's driving me a little batty too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. We're going right, to have to put you in the credits. You. Yeah. All right. Uh, the credits. <laughs> All right, dude. Love you, man. Have a good love weekend. You too. You too, All right, Barry. Bye.